How are you all? Second semester freshman? What are you? I'm a transfer. What year are you? How many are second semester freshmen? How many of you are not? That doesn't look right at all. Looks like there are more hands went up than people in the room. I don't know how you would have done that. In any case, um, this is uh, BA 100, right? Let me do something that I usually don't do for at least the first couple minutes class. Yes, everybody shake hands and hug right now. Greet your neighbor, turn left, turn right. Yes, shake hands. Yes. <laughs> Now, as much as of uh, no, stay, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. That was a completely unexpected thing. I didn't uh, stay standing, stay standing. Yeah, that's okay. As much as uh, that was very nice, that wasn't why I got you to stand up. But I'm, I'm glad you've all met each other. That's good. Um, I got you all to stand up because this is kind of how I see you. You're now me. I'm you. How does it feel to be incredibly handsome, first of all? Second of all, this is what it looks like, except for you must imagine me with a board right about here. OK, now look. Now here's the thing. You're me. I'm you. OK, now remember, there's a board here. So you don't see this. All you see is, is this. I'm doing one of two things if I'm sitting there going like this, right? Texting or something else that we will not mention, OK? <laughs> In any case, neither of them are appropriate. And if I see a sort of glow around your mid, your nether regions, right? <laughs> that again means one of two things. Either you're texting or you have been with Lindsay Lohan, right? <laughs> The point I'm trying to make is it drives me bananas, and it's very hard for me to miss. I understand how, you may sit. I understand the compunction to the device. I love the device, right? What is the percentage of online retail sales in the United States as compared to all sales. Take a guess. How many? Five. Too low. 35. Way too high. Huh? Err? Still don't understand you. Too high. 15. Too high. 12. 12%. 12 percent. Yes, give that man a prize. 12%. That means that 12% of all of our sales are online. Math quiz. What percent is not online? Oh, very good. Very good. Yes, yes. Um, what will keep that 12% number growing? eBay. Why eBay? Craigslist. Why Craigslist? No, both of which are wrong. <laughs> People word of mouth wrong. What is going to get the number of online sales to break through the ceiling of 12%? No. 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 What? Ah, how do you mean states away? What states away? It's your band? Emo. What, um, how, how do you, how do you mean, how do you mean the, the, the cell phone, access on cell phones? Things on the 
Yeah, in a way, the device, right? Give me an example of an industry that is transforming and more online sales are happening because of the device. Yes, in the way back. Music, Music is the logical one. What is the device? IPhone, the iPhone. In what way? Let's just drive this into the ground. How is it happening? Give me an example. Yeah, well, so you're driving in your car. You don't have to go on to a retail store. You guys don't even remember those things existing, right? You go right on the device and you download it to the device. Give me another one. Books. Books. What's the device? Uh, Kindle. The Kindle, right? What has happened to books with the Kindle? Talk about the Kindle for a minute. Everybody know what a Kindle is? Right. So what used to be something that you had to go into a retailer for, you no longer do. What's next? Food? Booze? What? Clothes? What's an example of an online clothes retailer that broke through a certain wall that no one ever thought would happen? Huh? Karma Loop. I don't know what that is. What's Karma Loop? What? Streetwear. Street <laughs> Give me another example. Anybody know Zappos? What's Zappos? Shoes. Shoes. What makes Zappos so special? Free shipping. Free shipping. What else? In returns. In returns. Now, why is that important? Save indoor track. Is indoor track in danger of, of going away? Well, in Where is your hometown? They hate indoor track in Arlington County. Fairfax. What state is Fairfax County in? Arlington, uh, Virginia. Virginia. Did you save it? No, I don't. You don't know, and yet you're wearing the shirt. No, I was doing my part, though. No, you're not. <laughs> you don't know if it worked or not. Or you've, di you've disengaged. No, you're not. Because you don't know if you said, yes, we saved it, or no, we didn't, or whatever. But you're just, well, it's just a shirt now. <laughs> So free shipping, free return. So what does that enable you to do, save indoor track? That I can, my name's Hillary. I'm probably going to call you, but I've got, do, you, would you like to count the number of people here? I'll try, Hillary, but you know, don't hold me to it. Uh, that enables you to buy it. You can choose, like, if you don't like it, you don't, you're not stuck with it, you can send it back for free. It's got no, no uh, monetary. Uh, but that's kind of amazing, right? right? The idea of buying shoes and go, because shoes, you, you know, size of, of, what size shoe do you wear, Hillary? Ten and a half, hard to find. But a ten and a half in one shoe may not be anywhere near a ten and a half from another maker's shoe, right? So we wouldn't think we would buy shoes online. What did Zappos sell their company for? How much money? And who bought them? Anybody. Who bought Zappos? Google. Who bought Zappos? Guess. Yes. How much? Couple million. Make another guess. 500 million. That's a couple? <laughs> Why would Amazon buy Zappos for $500 million? Uh, Increased profit. Profit. profit, no. Competition. What makes Zappos and Amazon care about each other? Both sell things online. Both sell things online. They both have a very, what, uh, um, Hillary just mentioned this idea of returns and that type of thing. Who did that sound like? Amazon. Do we like Amazon? How many people here use Amazon? Wow. We like Amazon. Amazon and Zappos had the same values. And that's a word that's going to come up repeatedly in this class. You're going to learn to hate it. Values. I teach values-based management. I care about values. What does that mean? When I say values, what do you think of? No laptops. Goodbye. What do I mean when I say values? Huh? How much it's worth. Okay, that's a good one. 
So there's a, there's a kind of monetary element. What else? Goals, I like that. Somebody said quality, I like that. Mission. Mission, these are good business speak words, I like that. What else? Yes? Abilities, Abilities values, okay, That's, I like that. Anything else? Yeah? Practicality. Pra how so practicality? So you're going back to value with that, right? Yeah. Money, that's interesting. So I want you to start thinking in values in terms of characteristics, what you care about, OK? I want you to start thinking about how you, what you can build and what matters, right? Hang on. Because here's the deal, right? How can I say such a thing? Is this a true statement in 2010? What do we call 2010, by the way? How do we say it? 2010? You don't say 29, though, right? So in 2010, is this, a, is this an accurate statement? Somebody defend or assault this statement? Yes? Oh, I love that. Let's push it back to value. One of the elements of value is something that sustains value over time. Okay? Companies, businesses that succeed maintain their value. Snooky, <laughs> right? Snooky? I'm obsessed with that show. <laughs> Who else? Really? Just you guys? Impossible not to watch the Jersey Shore. I had no desire to watch the Jersey Shore. I don't really like TV. And yet, flipping through the dials one day, what's that? Must watch. Must watch all of it. Must find out when it's on again. Can't stop watching. It's like a sociological experiment of a world that I've never known and never will know. It's like watching a car crash. Snooky has value right now. Snooky is getting 10 grand in appearance to show up and do whatever it is that Snooky does. Five years from now, where's Snooky? Sorry, rich, maybe. Streets, maybe. It'll be one or the other, right? So your point's well made. Is Snooky creative? She did. She did get on the show. You're, uh, there will be no, no fighting, right? So your, your point is what? Not true. And you said and, and you and why? Okay. Think about long-term value. Okay, right now. Just right now. I'm trying to make a point. Okay. okay? I'm trying to show that, and, and I'm not arguing with you. I think this is great. And I appreciate your willingness to, to go back and forth. And I hope you all do this. What's more important than creativity, then? Sustainability. Fine. Can we say that sustainability and creativity are in some ways tied together. What would we call the nexus of sustainability and creativity? What would you call that in business speak? Huh? Value. Value. 
<laughs> catching on. There's another one I'm about to say that will nine times out of 10 be the right answer. If a company can sustainably be creative, even as markets change, if Snooki went from being, you know, whatever the hell she is now, and the next year she was, you know, at the top of the pop culture kind of trash heap again, and the year after that, what would we start saying about Snooki other than she's like Madonna? Longevity, which means you have to do what? No, in the back, go ahead. Oh, so good. What's the word for keep coming up with ideas? Take a risk. Take a risk is good, not the answer, yeah? Innovation. Creativity sustained requires what? Innovation. You have two choices as someone running a business. Innovate or die. Wrong? Give me an example of a company that didn't innovate. GM, and what happened? They got screwed, and what happened? They had to be bailed out to the tune of how much? Billions of dollars. Whose money? Ours, right? Give me another example of a, all right, now let's do the counter of that. What's the counter example? What's the car company that did innovate? Toyota, yeah, Nissan, whatever. Give me an example of another company that didn't innovate and died. Circuit City, excellent. Blockbuster's in a bad spot, why? <coughs> Netflix. Why did they call it Netflix and not Mailflix? Transition, going to transition. Anybody watching Netflix streaming? So Netflix started when? Six, seven years ago, right? And they called it Netflix, not Mailflix. Smart. Who started Netflix? What's the name? Reed Hastings. Right. Start looking at these companies that you admire companies that have values that align with yours. If you had to articulate the values of Netflix, what would you say? What are some qualities or characters, characteristics? Speed. Speed. Quality. Convenience. Accessibility, but think about the, what are their values? What do they care about? Customer service, right? They care about that type of stuff. We have to start thinking about the things that you care about. I want this for you all. I want you to start figuring out your purpose idea. Does anyone have one now? What is it? Music. music. Excellent. So music is the thing. Have you ever, what, what, when you say music, what do you do? Do you, do you, you produce a rap? Okay. So have you ever had that experience where you're producing some track? How do you produce? Do you have a studio? Or, huh? Motif. What? Motif. Motif. So you got the headphones on, you're working with motif, and you look up and it's dark outside, and you haven't moved to eat, go to the bathroom, or anything. Has that ever happened to you? That's called a flow state, F-L-O-W, right? Somebody else give me an example of a flow state they found themselves in. Not drug related. <laughs> Although, what's a runner's high? Any, any runners here? What's a runner's high? But while you're running, does it, and this is, I'm not a runner, but, but I've been told that you almost feel like you leave your body and you're looking down on your body doing the thing. Is that, is that accurate? Right, that's it. You said it beautifully. No effort. You're doing something without expending effort. And I would submit to you all 
that if you can begin finding those things in your life and doing it now, damn it, your life will be much improved. If you can start finding a way to turn the things that you do when you're procrastinating into your business, you will have a happy life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now you say, how would I turn playing video games, which is what I do instead of um, my homework or whatever, into a life? Is that possible? Of course. How would I turn music into my life? Is that possible? Of course. How would I turn sports? How would I, I mean, give me something that's not possible, frankly. And yet we're trained to not believe this. We're trained that this doesn't have value, right? At a certain point, somebody takes your damn crayons away, right? I got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. We're raising them according to kind of this Waldorf method. Anybody familiar with that? Anybody go through that? So the Waldorf method doesn't push reading on them, right? Which sounds totally counterintuitive. Because we measure so much in our society by, oh, how old were you when you started reading, right? I was four, I was five, I was six. I didn't start reading until I was 14, right? <laughs> Waldorf says, once you do that, once you start putting this type of societal convention over the kid's brain, something about this starts to go away. And I see it in my little girl, right? She's coming to reading in her own way, and she's living in this realm of create creativity much longer. Somewhere along the way, and, and you guys are all musicians of some capacity, right? You've been felt, you've been made to feel marginalized for that, okay? And I'm telling you, you win. We can outsource just about everything today. You need, you got, okay, you call up customer service for something. Where's that phone call going? India. Okay, you need uh, a program developed for some web app that you're designing. Where are you going to get it done? Uh, probably not China, but going back to India, Russia. There are all sorts of places where you can outsource this. You think we're not going to start outsourcing accounting? Of course we are. Anything that's purely quantitative, we're not very good at. I don't know why. I mean, there's lots of arguments to say that our whole country was founded on a premise of entrepreneurship. For whatever reason, certain other countries have better quantitative brains than we do. Not to generalize, but you know what I'm saying. If I need somebody to run numbers for me, it is far more efficient for me to outsource it to them so I can do what I'm good at, which tends to be this. So go back to this, right? Figure out your purpose idea. We've got one person who said that they have one. Anybody else? Yeah. I love it. You're curating. You're a filter. We live in a time where filters are crucial. You go to Amazon right now to look for some new music. You go to Lala to look for some new music. You go to Mog, you go wherever. What happens a lot of the time? This used to happen in record stores. You'd go to a record store and you had in the back of your mind something that you were gonna look for and what would happen as soon as you walked into the record store? You'd forget what you came there for, right? And record stores were designed to do that. The same thing happens online. You go to iTunes to buy something or you, in more, it's happening more with streaming. If, now, has anybody used Lala? What do you guys listen to music on? Pandora, Pandora fine. Pandora is the, the ultimate example of a filter. Tell me, Pandora, what I should listen to. We need more of that. Does anybody know the website Daytrotter? Okay, so I, I run Daytrotter with, with Sean, and that's a filter. Every day, people go to Daytrotter and find out what they should listen to for those few minutes. We need that. Netflix has however many titles up there that you can pull from. How many of you have sat there and scrolled through all the recommendations and gone, I don't know. 
to the point that Netflix did what to try and improve their recommendations? What did they do recently? They offered a million dollar prize to whoever could come up with a system that would make their recommendations 10% more accurate than they are now. A million dollars. Somebody won. It's all about filtering. So the fact that you've got this purpose idea, I, what's your name? I, Kayla, like to take information, music in your case, and put order around it so that other people can experience it more effectively and efficiently. <laughs> That's the thing. All the information that we need is there. The problem is filtering it and finding it. What else? Who else has a passion idea, purpose idea? Yeah, what is it? Oh, man. Excellent. If you, I mean, w w when you're looking for, anybody know the website Mashable? Tell me about Mashable. And Mashable does every once in a while their job listings, right? Where they list companies that are looking for employees. Scrolls and scrolls of we need a social community manager. We need a social media expert. Why? Because they help filter, they help connect people, right? And, and you guys, your generation, can't, you were born into this, right? It, you gotta start taking these assets that you have and saying, how do I build a business around this? The cool thing is the barriers to entry for those businesses are so low. Could you today start a marketing firm? Yes. What do you need? What do you need? Computer. That's pretty much it. Could you today start a filtering firm? Yes. Could you today start a music label? Yes. Five years ago, I couldn't say those things. So what's the good and bad of that? Yeah? Yeah. With lower barriers of entry, it means anybody can get in. Right? You don't have to have money, you don't have to have experience, you don't have to have anything. Right? So what happens? What do you have to be? Innovative, creative, great. It's social Darwinism at its peak. If it's a total level playing field and I can walk right into a market that's full of other people, I damn well better survive. If not, someone else will do it better. So the goal is figure out what you care about. Make something. That's all a social object means. Your save uh, indoor track is a social object. It lost all its currency when you couldn't talk about it, right? Find another social object. I will find one. Okay. On your moleskin, you have some unpronounceable word. Foburg, a music festival. This becomes a social object right now. I pick it up and go, oh, what's Foburg? And what do you do? It's a music festival coming at large that would include all of Benjamin Street and having the South and Southwest bands come in. You tell a story, right? So, what in God's name is that? <laughs> Can I touch it? <laughs> recording. <laughs> You know the Bill Hicks routine when he talks about how he's, he's drunk and they make him say the alphabet backwards? And he's like, I couldn't say the alphabet backwards if I was stone cold sober. <laughs> this does look like a breathalyzer. <laughs> Not that I would know. Why do you have this? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to bootleg me? Am I going to be up on the torrent sites? Make some beats to me? Yeah. Is this a social object, if I may? Is it a social object? Why? It's more than advertising. Does anybody ever say, what's community coffee? <laughs> it's not a terribly good social object. This is a better social object, because we look at it and we go, what in God's name is this? 
And then you get to do what? Tell me what it is. Tell me a story. I'm trying to be very gentle with that thing. Red Bull, dear Lord. What's that little sticker you got there? Right there. No, no, no. Yeah, that. What's that? It came with the Red Bull. Give me that. <laughs> this is a social object. If you want to stay on top of things in this 24-7 world, you need to get some wings. Wow. Why would, why would Red Bull do something like this? This is sort of the definition of a social object. It becomes a social object, an effective one, however, if you were to take something like this and put it up on your wall. Right? Why do we put posters of Morrissey on our wall? Anybody have a poster of Morrissey on our wall, on their wall? Who's Morrissey? Who do we have posters? Who, does any, do anybody have posters of uh, chemical romance, my chemical romance on their wall? Who do you have posters of? <laughs> Hendrix. <laughs> Hendrix. So you put up Jimmy, is he burning the guitar? What is he doing? He's soloing, right? Huh? He's recording. You put that on your wall. Somebody walks into your room. What do you want them to do? Ask about it so that you can do what? Tell them about it because it does what? It starts to contextualize you, right? It acts as a schema. It's shorthand. It defines you in a way without you having to sit there and go, I like music. I like classic rock. I like guitar players. I like innovative guitar players. You just say, I like Hendrix, and everybody goes, oh yeah, I know who you are, right? You're that guy. <laughs> the classic example is Bose noise cancellation headphones. You know what they are, right? So if I was to say, come up with a product that, and my marketing pitch was, like Bose, but cheaper, would I have to say anything else? I don't have to sit there and go, well, what we do is we take sound waves, and then we create negative sound waves and blast them together. And that cancels the noise out, right? I would have lost you. I need these schemas. I need these things, these objects that you can express. And then, just like the lady you're hoping to walk into your dorm room and get, I love Jimi Hendrix too. Let's go have community coffee together and then a Red Bull and then we'll look at this thing together. <laughs> right? You find others that care about it. Now when we put this into a business, we want to start giving people things that they can take with them and share. Right? And become evangelists. Anybody familiar with the artist Little Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> what did Little Wayne do to start generating interest in his music? Mixed. Tell us about a mixed. What is a mixtape? Is it a tape? No. So CD talk without your mouth directly in front of your hand. CDs. Right, so you're taking other beats, and now why would you do something like that using the language that we've learned so far in this class? Because the beat already created a value, uh, it already had a certain characteristic to it. And by using that beat, it becomes what? A schema, right? I understand what Little Wayne is all about because of the beats he chose to put on his mixtape, correct? Now with those mixtapes, did he sell them? What did he do with them? And what happened? Because people started to share them, because they shared the values, right? You guys are all music business people. Does anybody out there think that unless you are Susan Boyle, you're going to make any money selling CDs? But does anybody out there think that we can't make money in the music business? And the music becomes the social object. Because music 
is no longer scarce. What does that mean? Everywhere. If you want a song, if you want to go hear Little Wayne, are you going to get in your car, drive to the record store, walk into the record store, pull a CD off the shelf, unwrap that impossible to unwrap thing, and then put it in your, huh? Nah. -uh. What are you going to do? Download it or stream it, right? Downloading will soon become completely unrealistic. Why do we need to download something if we can stream whatever we want all the time? YouTube, right? So as music becomes non-scarce, what do we have to do to make money in the music business? Stand out, but we have to connect the non-scarce thing to something that is scarce. What's scarce in the music business? Huh? Tickets. What else? What? No. What else? What's scarce? Originality. No. What's a scarce item? But we just said that CDs aren't. You guys think. What else are you going to sell? Go on tour. We talked about tickets. What else? Merch. T-shirts. Clothes. In my closet somewhere, I have Slayer sweatpants. <laughs> I will not be wearing them. What else? Think. What else? Vinyl. Excellent. Vinyl growth was 33% positive this year, up 33%. CDs fell 18%. Downloads was only up like 16%. Vinyl had the biggest growth. Vinyl is the classic example of a social object. Why? What do you do with vinyl? You show it to people. And what do they do? Yeah. It's an artifact. That's a beautiful word. With artifacts, what do we do with it? We look at them beautiful, right? We talk about them. We tell stories about them. What's another scarce object? Vintage, signed stuff, excellent. What do we really want from the artists that we love? What's the ultimate scarce object in an era of lack of scarcity? Sorry? To know them, access, right? The ultimate scarce, the, really the only thing that's truly scarce in this world is time. So if an artist is willing to give his or her time to you, what would you pay for that? Who's your favorite artist? Yeah. Sorry? Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. You, no, there's going to be a, a you, you don't agree with this assessment. OK. So the opportunity, do you have a Clash sticker? Right above a Grateful Dead sticker. Wow, very cool. That's weird cognitive dissonance social object thing, but raise a toast to St. Joe's drummer, please. Um, so Bones, Thugs, and Harmony, right? What, what is it worth for you to hang with them? A lot. Yeah. Because you're getting access. So you start getting into models like subscription models, right? Certain artists are doing things like for $100 a year, whenever I come in town to play a concert, you get in the show free and you get to hang. Right? They're connected. And, and, but by the way, we'll give you all the music. They're connecting non-scarce with scarce items. All right, I'm going to leave you with this after we go through the syllabus. Life is too short not to do something that matters. Okay? You don't believe it now. You're still at that stage where the days seem long. John Prine fans out there? John Prine said, the years flow by like a broken down dam in Angel from Montgomery, right? Sad but true. So I implore you all, start coming up with your purpose idea. Start figuring out how to make some money about it. And I don't say that in some sort of greedy capitalist fashion, although I don't have any problem with that. I say that because money allows you to keep doing the things that you want to do and doing less of the things you don't want to do. Speaking of things you don't want to do, let's go over the syllabus.
The books, so we'll skip through the objectives. You can read those at your leisure. Number two, don't cheat, I will find you, as they said in uh, Last of the Mohicans. The books, they should be in the bookstore, correct? Nope. Really? Are they not there? I saw, okay, we'll go. Okay, because you got to start, yes, ma'am. Which one? Hunt around for it, because I have a feeling it probably is. It may not be where it should be, but it's there, okay? Um, you can see the, uh, the grading here, three tests. They're multiple choice, 25 questions each. I tend to get an average grade of 80. I tend to, you guys, you guys will think that this is an easy class, okay? I will tell you that typically there are three or four A's. There are three or four F's, and the rest are in the middle, B to D range, with a lot of C's. So, you know, I just, I just warn you with that. Um, the project, I'll explain later. We have instituted in the last year plus or minus grades. So typically what I'll do is if you're in the 90, 92 range, I'll give you an A minus, right? But I, I can bump that or lower that. Um, attendance. All right, so starting next class, you're all obliged to bring me a current event about the business world, music business or otherwise, that you find interesting in the short summary. By short, I mean a paragraph. The main thing I'm going to do with this is collect them, look at them, find something that I find interesting and that relates to the lesson at hand, and we'll talk about it a little bit, okay? So be prepared to talk about it. The second thing I do, and I'm hoping that I will have a graduate assistant shortly, is that I will use these for attendance taking purposes. And as you see, you're allowed to miss three classes, which is generous. After that, and that means you're allowed to not hand in your current event. Um, after that, you start dropping grades, okay? You do. I'm talking about a paragraph. It should take you no more than 15 minutes. I'm more concerned about the summary. Exactly. In the ability to defend it. So if I, I pick it up and what's your name? I say, Emmanuel, tell me about your current event. I don't want you to go, oh, I don't really remember. I want you to tell me about it. I want you to be able to tell me more than just what you have on the summer. Okay? I'll be, well, there's a learning curve. We'll flatten it. Okay? Uh, the course schedule, you can see all that's there. We've got tests. Uh, three tests are already outlined there. The third test is not in bold for some reason. That will constitute the final, by the way. I will determine whether or not we, um, we hand in the project on the final day. We'll figure that out. Um, office hours are up at the top. Right now my office is about 6,000 degrees, so I'd wait until they have that figured out. Any questions? Start, start looking around, start finding stuff. Before we go, Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, we will figure that out. Uh, yes. You do. But no, no, look. Go back to the course schedule. You see that the reading, there's a little, uh, the T means the, this book. Text, T for text. So you don't need any book except for this one up until looks like week four, where you start reading L and O, which is Lexus and Olive Tree. Now, I will warn you that people tend to do OK on test one and three and bomb test two, because test two is all Lexus and the Olive Tree. Start reading it now. I care deeply about that book. I will convert some of you to like it. Some of you will just be angry with me. In any case, start reading that book now. Okay. Yes? 
Well, you need to find it. Go tell them they got to order it. It's been ordered. I'll check in too. But by, net, by Wednesday, you should have read chapter one in the blue textbook. All right, anything else? See you Wednesday. <laughs>